Hey guys, welcome to a new video. This video is going to be the soldering guide or soldering tutorial for the new uh, Quinn LED Dig Quad. So we had the Dig Uno before, but this is the Dig Quad. Well, and in very short terms, it expands on what the Dig Uno did. Dig Uno was for like simpler LED setups where you had like an LED strip and you ran an ASP8266 and a single channel and these boards, well, they're kind of prepared for the future where you want to run multiple channels, hence the name Dig Quad, it has four level shifted outputs, but it also adds a lot of, um, well, power input and power output terminals. So it can handle a lot more power and it has seven positive and seven negative output terminals to power inject your LEDs. And those are divided over five fuses. And well, the board makes it clear how that works. Uh, so you can do proper power injection with fused protection. But really enough about the board. If you wanna know more about the board and its features, check out the video here where I go all into that. And of course, there is all the articles on quinled.info. Now, there is already a soldering guide on there, but it's a picture-based guide. But if you're soldering next to the video, which shows you how to do it, kind of, keeping that guide handy is going to be very useful because it goes through all the steps you need to take and where each of every component goes, etc. So make sure to check out the soldering guide there too, next to this video. And well, not much left to say. Let's hear a word from our sponsor for this video and then let's get right to soldering. Oh, before I do that, by popular demand, I did all the SMD parts on the board using hot air. But as always, my DIY designs are easily built by using an iron only. If you want to see the technique for that, just take a look at my Quinn LED Quad, Quinn LED Deca, or Quinn LED Dig Uno soldering videos, where I show how you can tin one pad, place the component in it, let go, tin the other pad, and you're done soldering an SMD component. It's quite easy, really, but if you can do hot air, eh, it's, it's worth doing it that way. So, yeah, let's get to the sponsor spot and then get to the soldering guy. Wait, wait, hold on. Interrupting this video real quick. This video and or project is partially sponsored by PCBWay. If you've ever looked into doing one of my DIY projects, well, you're going to need PCBs. And PCBWay can make those for you very quickly and deliver them right to your doorstep. I often use them because they offer consistent quality while still being cheap. And they also have very versatile shipping options where you can combine multiple orders if you want to, or use e-packet shipping saving on shipping time, but also costs. Another unique feature is that once you place your order, you get a representative assigned to your order. And if you have any questions during the process, they can help you out. Yeah, is this PCB way? Yeah, I just ordered some of those Queen LED boards. Is everything correct? Will this, will this work? Yeah, yeah, PCB way here. Don't worry about it. We've made hundreds of those boards and they all work great. Ah, okay, great. I hope to get my order soon, thanks. But honestly, for actually for real, if you need any PCBs for one of my projects, such as the Quinn LED boards, or for your own project, go check them out. I'll have a link down in the description. And if you register with that link, you will get a few dollars off your first order and it will also let them know I sent you. Cool. Okay, back to the video. Starting off with the soldering, since we're going to use a hot air gun, we need to put paste on all the right pads. Now, Normally you do this using a stencil, which has holes cut out of it. So the paste is applied to all the right spots, but ordering a stencil is extra money. And if you want to do it this way, since I use pretty big pads to keep it DIY friendly, it can be done this way and you save the cost of a stencil. The 
the overlay images you see with all the components are those of the picture soldering guide on QuinLED.info. Again, make sure to check that out because it goes through all the steps and all the components you need at those exact spots. So I started doing the diodes and now I'm doing the resistors and capacitors mixed through each other. But as I said, there's images to show you where it all goes. Okay, once all components are on their pads, let's take the hot air gun and well, basically melt the paste into solder. Now this is what makes SMD soldering so nice. Because of the surface tension of the solder itself, it basically pulls all the components to their right spot. Nowadays, hot air soldering stations aren't that expensive anymore. The one I'm actually using is only 30 bucks and I'll have some links in the description. I'm also testing a new soldering station which has hot air and an iron combined, but that video isn't out yet, so make sure to stay subscribed to the channel to check that out. This video has been sped up four times, so it's pretty quick. It takes a little bit longer in real life, especially if you're doing this for the first time, but using hot air to solder with paste, it's pretty nice in my opinion. Let's move on to the top side, which also has one SMD component. For this, I am using the iron with the method I mentioned, tinning one pad, and for the LED, make sure it has the correct polarity, so the little arrow has to point at the little dot on the right bottom corner, and then melt that pad, put the component in there, solder the other pad, and you're done. Next up is the level shifter. You need to bend the legs a little bit to get it into their holes, but after that, it's a flush fit. Now, soldering has a lot to do with getting the heat into the pad and the leg of the component. As you can see, the normal legs are easily soldered, but the first leg I soldered needed a lot more heat because it's connected to a lot more copper. More about this in a minute. Okay, next up we're going to place the fuse holders. Now remember the heat I was speaking of? These fuse holders are connected to copper planes instead of normal connected lines. That means it has a lot more copper connected and thus you need to sink in a lot more power or heat to make sure the, the solder starts flowing. So hold your soldering iron on the pad and try to feed the solder in it. And at first it won't really want to take the solder, but as you can see, if you keep the soldering iron on there, it'll start flowing after a while and well, that's what we want. Now, those were still individual copper planes. This is a giant copper plane which is stitched to two layers. So it's going to need a lot of heat to get started. But once you have the heat in there, keep doing all the pads and it should start becoming easier. And well, when I do the last pad, I double back to the first one because now we heated up the whole plane. So I make sure those are reflowed correctly. 
Now, as I said, the video sped up four times, so this takes minutes, even with my 80 watt iron. So really get some heat in there and make sure the connections are done well. Don't worry too much about overheating components. Yes, the board will get hot, but it can handle that, but it needs to heat to reflow correctly. After that, we're doing the pin headers and the voltage selection pin headers. Now, I use a little trick. I tack one of the pins of each of the strips, and then I look on the front side if they're in straight, and if they aren't, I basically hold it straight with a finger while melt melting that single pad so you can straighten it out. And once it's straight, I solder all the other pads. If you get a bridge between two pins, add some additional flux and that should clear it up easily. Next up is the temperature sensor. I just twist the legs a little bit until they fit through the holes, select a height, I don't want it really flush with the board, I want it a little bit higher, and then just bend the pins on the back side and solder them in. I snip off the legs because otherwise it makes the rest of the soldering a bit harder. Now let's add all the screw terminals. Now, I start soldering with the easy screw terminals first, because as I said, these are only connected to simple lines, but some of the other terminals are connected to copper planes again. So, as you can see here with the ground terminal, they are going to need a lot of heat to first heat up the whole plane, and then the reflowing starts to become easier. So, like you're seeing, keep your iron on there for a while, even minutes if you have to, just to heat up the whole board, do not touch the board, and then you should be able to reflow most of the pins easily, or easier. Now that we've started on this copper plane, make sure to continue soldering all the pins while you've heated it up. Okay, time for the other side of the board. Now the positive plane is split into two planes and then into lots of separate for the fuses. So these are a little bit easier to solder.
Now that the screw terminals are done, let's do the pin headers for the ESP32. The easiest way to do that is by first placing the female headers, then placing the male headers inside of those, and then placing the ESP32 on top of that, making a nice little stack. First, we then solder the male headers onto the ESP32 and make sure to solder only the pins in the white area. So as you can see, the female headers are actually hanging over the board. You can get special 8-pin headers. These are the 10-pin headers that come with the ESP32, but these work fine also, so no real reason to buy the other ones. Just snip off the access pins when you're done. Okay, now that the ESP32 sandwich is completed, let's solder in the voltage converter. Make sure to pay attention to put the 9 volt and the 5 volt in their correct spot. And when we're done, snip off the legs again. Okay. Final piece are the two big caps. And to make sure it's straight, I tack on one of the joints and then level it while keeping it melted and then have it harden so I know the cap is in there correctly. Again, these are polarized, so make sure to pay attention to the marks on the board. snip off those legs and the soldering is done. So first thing you need to do is set the voltage jumper either to 5 volt for 5 volt LEDs, 12 volt for 12 volt LEDs, or 5 volt external if you want to use a relay or a dual power supply setup. And then the really the last thing to do is add some fuses. I hope you enjoyed watching this soldering tutorial. If you have any more questions, make sure to check out QuinnLED.info and the guides on there. As I said, the picture guide is really helpful. And other than that, if you need more help, there's always the Discord server you can join. And I wish you fun building some boards. Bye-bye.